So Kyle Kalinske did a secular talking smack a couple of days ago, and he actually got pretty heated because a lot of his uh, viewers were sending super chats basically talking about uh, the failure of Justice Democrats and advocating for a third party, right? The People's Party is the, is the new wave because essentially a lot of people have been disappointed with the Justice Democrats and what they've done. And I'm not going to go so far as to condemn or even criticize the people who are disappointed in what the Justice Democrats have done, you know? Uh, maybe they haven't been enthusiastic enough. I thought that their expectations for Biden were ground low. <laughs> you know, them coming out and saying that, you know, surprising how, uh, you know, how good Biden has been. Like, what were your, what were your expectations? That he was going to be George Bush? Um, and Joe Biden has been horrible so far. Uh, he's given up on every possible, you know, progressive ideal. Um, and so, you know, the Justice Democrats failed. And so now, what is it? You know, you go third party, right? It's this Jimmy Dore idea. Um, and so Kyle got pretty heated in a sort of, uh, I don't know, debate or about this issue. And so I wanted to show you guys this clip and I wanted to uh, give you my thoughts on it. So go ahead and check this out. If Justice Democrats was the solution and they failed, why is a third party not viable? What you're suggesting is just to do justice. I didn't say do justice Democrats again. See, now I'm pissed off because people are putting fucking words in my mouth. But, we, but we've seen that strategy fail over and over. Okay, so point number one. The third party fucking strategy has failed over and over too, and they failed way more profoundly than the Justice Democrats have failed. How many Greens are in Congress? How many Greens are in the Senate? How many Greens are even in fucking local and state places? They're not there. How many People's Party people are in the Senate? How many People's Party people are in Congress? How many? How many? So somehow that's not a failure, but it's a failure when we get 12 there and they don't do as good of a job as they should do. Take off the fucking blinders, son. Take off the blinder. People are holding on to this thing in a religious cultish type way. This idea of a third party. I'll believe it's going to happen when RC Cola overtakes Coca-Cola and Pepsi. It's not going to fucking happen. It's not going to happen. And again, if you want to try it, go right ahead. I wish you well. I do. I just don't think it's going to work. I'm not going to bullshit you guys and say, yeah, oh, we're, we're really close in the next election cycle to having a People's Party president <laughs> or even a one People's Party senator. You're not even going to get one fucking senator. Not even one. Not even one. So th the difference, the fucking difference between me and people like this is that I'm willing to admit Justice Democrats failed. I'm willing to admit that. They're not willing to admit that their third party attempt failed when it's been tried a thousand fucking times and it's lost a thousand fucking times. And the words that they put in my mouth were, oh, what you're suggesting is do justice Democrats over again. When the fuck did I say that? When the fuck? What I said was, I like the idea of a general strike. I like the idea of protests around specific issues. I like the idea of building unions out. I like the idea of single, po single policy advocacy. That's what I like. The only other point I made is that if I were to run for something, I would run as a Democrat because I'd be more likely to win as a Democrat. That's it. That's it. By the way, if a Republican came along who nominally agreed with me on the policies, I'd vote for the fucking Republican because I don't care about fucking labels. I don't care about labels, whereas these people are more obsessed with the label than actually fucking winning. So somehow if somebody runs as a Democrat and they're right on all the policy issues, now all of a sudden they're out the window, don't support them. Why? Because other Democrats are bad. The fuck is that? I don't give a fuck if some other Democrat is bad. If this one is right on the issues, doesn't fucking matter. I don't care about a fucking label. What am I, five? No, it's about the actual issues. So grow up and stop fucking strawmanning people because now I'm getting fucking pissed off. Are you aware Senator Patrick Leahy is in at least five Batman films? What? So basically what Kyle is saying there is he, he seems to be saying that the Justice Democrats failed. I think it's too early to say that the Justice Democrats failed because I think it's going to need a much more long-term uh, process. Uh, if you thought that, you know, uh, the electoral system and Congress and everything was going to be, uh, you know, revolutionized in, uh, in a couple years, I think you were sorely mistaken, very, very sorely mistaken. So I think it's going to take a lot more time, and I think it's more of a long-term thing. And so I don't agree that the Justice Democrats have failed. And so what Kyle appears to be saying is he supports different routes to getting progressive causes through. He says strengthening unions, being more, you know, there's, there's sort of two aspects of electoral politics or politics. Um, there's the one where you're voting and then there's the one where, you know, you're doing protesting and out things that are 
outside of directly voting for somebody. And that's, you know, uh, you know, basically having these activist groups and all of this kind of stuff, unions, blah, 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 all of those things, which are incredibly powerful. Um, and so he thinks that focusing on those is more important. And so, but he does not seem to be in favor of the third party idea, you know, the whole People's Party thing that has been created. And that's because he understands that that's going to be a brutal waste of time and it's going to be a complete failure. And he cites the failure of the Green Party to even get a singular uh, vote in uh, or a single member in Congress. They haven't even had one federal member of Congress in their entire existence. And so when you really look at it from a political science perspective and the way that the U.S. electoral system is set up, it'll explain to you why the U.S. is so firmly a a two-party system, right? So you have in the U.S. a presidential system where it's not a parliamentary system. Parliamentary systems are more geared towards um, multi-party systems, but even the major countries really in effect are two-party systems even a lot of the parliamentary ones like the uk is a two-party plus system they have a parliamentary system but they're really a two-party plus system where there's two major parties right it's labor and and conservative and the others are just kind of these minor parties that may have some sway but they're not they're not serious contenders now um apparently the reason for a lot of this two-party system in the u.s has basically been a two-party system since its, since its founding uh there have been a key you know teddy roosevelt had that one third party uh that you know he got close but he wasn't able to win um and then you know ross perot was able to make that independent run where i forgot how much of the vote he got but you know it was pretty good um but the u.s uh, for the vast majority of its history has really been a two-party system Again, that has a lot to do with the presidential system where having the president independently voted um, of, you know, Congress makes it so that you essentially have these this protagonist antagonist relationship in politics that ends up make, making it a two party system. Um, but also what appears to be an even bigger factor is the first past the vo- uh, post system where you have whoever gets the plurality of votes, you don't even have to get a majority of votes, wins the seat. That seems to gear itself more towards a two-party system because it negatively impacts third-party systems. And so what you really see, I think, in even more, potentially even more impactful is the first-past-the-post system. You look at a lot of these multi-party systems, they're mostly smaller countries. You know, the bigger countries that are supposed to be multi-party are France and Germany. Um, but even those kind of can be two party systems when you really look at them. Um, but what they, you know, France doesn't use proportional representation except for a little bit, I believe. Um, but they have two round, uh, voting instead of a plurality vote in the first round. If nobody gets a majority, you go to the second round. That's something here we see in runoffs in the U S Um, But in Germany, they do have a good amount of proportional representation. They have like this mixed ballot thing where there's two ballots. On the first one, you're voting for a candidate, local candidate, um, and then you're voting for the party on the second ballot. And so like half the Bundestag is voted, um, you know, via a direct candidate and the other half is proportional representation. So they have like a really mixed system that's really interesting. But all those multi-party systems you see, Israel, Sweden, all these other countries that are not, they're not major powers uh, like the U.S. is, and so they're not even really comparable, um, they have a lot of proportional representation. And so that seems to be really what makes it able to be a third-party, you know, system, a multi-party system. But would a multi-party system in the U.S. really even be that good? I'm not really even that convinced it would be. Uh, uh, Third-party, multi-party systems often lead to a lot of fragmentation. Um, And you can see in a country like the U.K. or somewhere like that, um, do you think that a Green Party or a Progressive Party would really be that successful? Or would you struggle to get like 2 to 5% of the vote? Um, And so the way that the U.S. electoral system is set up right now is completely will not work to have uh, a third party. It's just not going to work. You'd have to entirely change the the first-past-the-vote post system. You'd have to implement proportional representation to at least some kind of a good degree and sort of uh, remove the winner-takes-all system in a heavy way. 
and you would have to, you know, the presidential system, France is a semi-presidential system where they do independently vote for their president, right? What's the difference between parliamentary system and presidential system? In parliamentary systems, you don't vote for the prime minister, you vote for your party, um, you know, you vote for the candidate of the party in your district, in your area, and whoever gets the most uh, MPs in the parliament, members of parliament for the party, they get to choose who they want to be prime minister. So you're not even voting for prime minister. And then um, the big difference is in a presidential system, you can't be president and a congressional member at the same time. But in parliamentary systems, you have to be a member of parliament to be prime minister. So uh, those are the, there, you know, there's some pretty big differences between presidential and parliamentary systems. So the current system that's set up, it's not going to work. And I would even question whether or not a multi-party system would even be all that great. Um, I'm not even convinced of its amazing things. And when you, the thing also is, when you really look at uh, political science and major democracies, major democracies typically have a bell curve uh, political ideology, and so that means it's an upside-down U. So it means the mean is where most people are. And so the only real way to have your party be the primary party is to make your ideas mainstream and looked at as the mean. And so that's what we have to do. It really is the mean, essentially. But when you do it in the third party fashion, it's not going to be looked at as the mean. It's going to be looked at as more, uh, you know, essentially a fringe, basically. You're, you know, you're this third party. Whereas if you take over the Democratic Party, you make your ideas mainstream, then you are the mean. Um... That's really the only way you're going to do it, because the U.S. is a bell curve at the end of the day, political ideology-wise. Most uh, major democracies are. It's the only way for it to stay stable. Um, so it is going to be a failure. Third parties have been a complete failure. It's a complete waste of time. And so if you're out here shitting on Justice Democrats, I just want to, I want you to ask yourself, what is your alternative to the Justice Democrats? If you say the People's Party, um, it's a complete waste of time. You won't get shit done, because... Uh, we've seen how third parties have fared horribly in the United States. We understand the political science behind why and how the system is set up in the U.S. And so if you're trying to get a third party through, you're wasting your time. And so, and if you understand the, uh, the logic behind why it's not going to work, but you're still with it anyways, then to me you're just in some kind of weird, like, you just want to feel good and not get stuff done. But as long as you feel good, you feel like you're getting something done then you're just wasting time and you're a self-centered idiot. Uh, but it's better to try to pressure and really work on continuing to take over the Democratic Party because that's really the only way. And you have to think about it more in a long game. I think thinking about it too much in the short term, I think, is dumb because it's you can't... I mean, it, again, the Justice Democrats have been in there for, what, three years now? You know what I mean? Like, what, the whole system's supposed to be changed in three years? I mean, that's completely laughable. Um... So it's too quick. It's too quick to give up. And I think that that's dumb. I think you should think in the longer term. And <laughs> honestly, at this point, you're essentially hostage to the J Dems because you don't have any other option. <laughs> There's literally no other option. So Kyle, I think, is completely right here. But the only thing I would disagree with him on is the idea that necessarily they were a complete failure. Uh, but I do agree that we should go through those means of uh, empowering these other organizations, unions, and stuff like that. I think that's very important uh, because those are definitely very important groups in politics. Um, but yeah, that that that's how I feel about that.